What's going on guys, it's Hi with the Upper Left USA and in this video we are going to be taking a look at and comparing some of the differences between two of the most popular film stocks on the market today and that is Ilford HP5 Plus and Kodak Tri-X 400. Before we get started I think it's important to talk about the setup that I used for this comparison. To take my photos I used two cameras, the Nikon N2020 and the Nikon N90S. Between the two cameras, I use one Nikon 50mm f 1.8D lens. For me in terms of camera setup, this is as close as I can get to a 1 to 1 comparison. It would have been nice to have two of the exact same bodies, but I don't think it's actually necessary. If you didn't know, shooting film is not like shooting digital where a camera body can provide drastically different results. The driving force behind digital image rendering is of course the camera sensor. With film, the camera body is merely just a vessel to hold the film stock. The film determines the grain, sharpness, contrast, and of course the speed or the ISO. So the camera itself doesn't necessarily matter as long as it functions correctly. Something that does matter is the lens attached to the body because it can contribute to the sharpness, contrast, and the final rendering of the image. This is why I chose to switch one lens between two bodies just to keep things as close to each other as possible because there can be minor variations between lenses even if they are within the same model. With development, I used the same chemicals for both film stocks. They were both developed at the same temperature with times determined by the massive dev chart. Finally, both films were scanned with the same scanner using the same method and settings. I should make it clear that the results shown in this video are very particular to my setup. They are particular to the gear that I used to get the final images. You shouldn't watch this video and think that the results that I got represent these films as a whole. There are many factors that can contribute to different results and there is room for differences within every portion of my setup. For example, you can very well be using a different camera setup than I did and as stated this can very well affect the final results. I also shot these films at box speed because I feel that that would be the most beneficial way of approaching this comparison for those who are checking out these films for the first time. You can and may be shooting these films at different speeds, pushing and pulling them, and that of course will have an effect on the way the films are rendered. With the chemicals that I use to develop these films, they're just the ones at my disposal and the ones that I typically use. There are definitely other chemicals that may very well be better suited for these films. And finally, I'm using a very particular scanner, one that many of you will not be using. And from personal experience, a scanner can attribute its own characteristics on a film. What I show you should be used in a general sense. Use it as a starting point for your own experimentation. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get started. The rolls of film that I shot were done so on multiple days and in various conditions, but the camera settings used to take each set of images were the same. For the first few images, I visited a local tattoo shop, the Needle Lounge, and took some indoor environmental portraitures and just general shots. All images that you'll see are as scanned and unedited. Because the equipment and process used to get these final images are the same, the various differences that you'll see will largely be attributed to the differences in the film stocks. It should be noted that because of YouTube compression and because of the different monitors that we are viewing these images from, some of the things that I mentioned in this video may not correlate with what you see. In the description, I've included links which lead you to my website where you can see larger and higher resolution copies of the images shown in this video. When I examine a film stock, I analyze it in a few different aspects and these include grain, sharpness, and contrast, so that's what I'll be discussing in this video. It should be noted that these aspects can be very subjective. How different people perceive grain, sharpness, and contrast can be very different from one another. What I express are my personal opinions. For this first image, let's start with the grain. On my end, the grain pattern between these two films are noticeably different. With Tri-X, the grain seems to be closer together, giving it the perception that it is finer. With HP5, I can see a lot more space in between the various textures of the grain. This makes it more noticeable and prevalent in my opinion. In terms of sharpness, I'll cover this with later pictures that I think show the differences better. Contrast. I think between these two images, although the differences are minor, it is noticeable. Tri-X is a more contrasty film. Pretty much anywhere that's in shadow in this image, the blacks are going to be darker. Looking at the face of the artist with HP5, it almost looks like there's one shade of grey while on Tri-X, there are clearly defined shades and tones. You can argue that this is because the artist moved and his face is lit differently, but I don't think it's anywhere near what these images show. 
Remember, he's wearing a hat and realistically, under that bill, there should be noticeable shadows. In this situation, I think Triax is more true to life. The same thing can be said about this image. Pay attention to the fresh black ink on the client's arm and the chair that he's sitting on. The grain is much more noticeable with HP5, while Triax is much smoother. Triax is again also more contrasty. The dark parts of the chair are black. There's no detail there with Triax, while the chair is more of a gray with HP5. In this third example, look at the shadows around the eyes of the artist. HP5 has lighter shades of gray that largely blend in with each other. Triax, on the other hand, very apparent differences in tones. In contrast to the last few images, these next images were taken outdoors at a local park. This first image is of a tractor. I think everything that I previously mentioned about grain and contrast are true here. Grain is less noticeable with Triax and it is also contrastier. I want to show this image because I've noticed that in general, HP5 seems to produce an overall brighter image than Triax and this could be for various reasons. HP5 could simply be a higher speed film than box rating. The extra brightness could also be because of the lack of contrast. Because the image doesn't have as many dark tones, I could just be perceiving the HP5 image to be brighter. There are a lot of reasonings to this, but in general, I personally perceive HP5 to produce a brighter image. Here's an image taken at f1.8. I think if you're examining grain, a good way to do so is by looking at the bouquet or the out of focus areas of an image. The grain really stands out in both of these images to me. I would still say that Triax provides a smoother grain. I would describe HP5's grain as being clumpier. It's just spaced out in a way that makes it look like there's more grain in a particular area. It's difficult to describe, but overall I believe that Triax provides finer, smoother grain. These last few images were taken on a third day at my local waterfront. This first one is a straightforward side profile of a bike. Looking at this image, I noticed the difference in contrast right away. Again, Triax is much more contrasty. I chose this image because the contrast of Triax really makes the bike pop out from the background. There is a clear separation between the bike and the background, and that's because of the dark tones with Triax. The HP5 image again provides more shades of gray rather than any real blacks. This contrast also really adds to the perception of sharpness. Because the bike stands out so much in the HP5 image, it just seems like it's sharper. Your attention is immediately drawn to the bike. I can't really say this for the HP5 image where the bike just kind of blends in with the wall. This next image shows the same thing. The extra contrast of Triax really helps to provide separation for the boat from the other aspects of the scene like the sky and the water. The contrast helps to show depth in the boat. It helps to show that there are surfaces at different distances from the viewer. With the HP5 image, it almost looks like the different surfaces of the boat are on a flat plane. There's little depth or dimension in the boat. Here is a portrait style photo of a Chinese lion statue. Focus was set on the right eye and to me there is such a clear distinction between the two images in terms of sharpness. Triax looks so much more sharper to me than HP5. The lines of the eye is clearly defined compared to HP5. To me this image shows that Triax is a sharper film than HP5, but again, I think the contrast of Triax helps with this. The extra contrast helps with the separation between the surfaces and provides depth which promotes sharpness. Moving on to the last photo for this comparison, I chose this photo because it really exhibits the stark differences in contrast that you can get with these two films. With this, there's a white subject on a darker background. In reality, the background isn't really that dark because the entire scene was in direct sunlight, but because the branches and leaves grew in layers, there ended up being a lot of shadows. With Triax, this just translates to a lot of blacks. With HP5, we can see that there is still some detail in the shadows. Because there are a lot more shades of gray, it's easier to make out that there are different structures in the background. With this, it just depends on what you're looking for. If you want more detail in the shadows, HP5 will provide you with that, while Triax provides you with a clear separation between the subject and the background with the use of contrast. I've been meaning to do a test like this for a long time, one where I get comparison photos that are as close to one to one as I can get so that I can see for myself the differences between two different film stocks and make an educated decision on which film stock to use in which situations. 
When I first started shooting film, HP5 was the first film stock that I ever shot because it was very popular. It's highly regarded and widely recommended. HP5 can also be a good bit cheaper than Tri-X and this was important to me when I first started shooting film. But to be honest, I was never really happy with the results that I got with HP5. There's just something about the way that it looks that I really don't like. So I switched and tried a bunch of different film stocks, eventually ending up with Kodak Tri-X and Kodak T-Max, and this really cemented in my mind that I liked Kodak films better. But this was largely just a feeling because again, I've never done these one-to-one -one comparisons before. After doing this video, I would say that without a doubt, I personally like Kodak Tri-X more than Ilford HP5+. Among the things I examined, grain, sharpness, contrast, Kodak Tri-X just provides me with something that I'm more happy with than what Ilford HP5 does. In terms of grain, I personally like fine grain films and from the images that I took, it just seems like this is more prevalent with Tri-X than it is with HP5. I like the way smooth fine grain looks and how it adds to certain textures and surfaces and the way that they are rendered. The way HP5's grain is structured is part of the reason why I didn't like it in the first place because I just find it to be too distracting for my personal taste. In terms of sharpness, I think this is a little bit harder to determine, but again, I would give the extra edge to Kodak Tri-X. I didn't do any scientific testings with charts or anything like that, so it's hard to say that one film is sharper than the other, but based on the images that I took, I personally do think that Tri-X provides a sharper image. Lastly, contrast, and I think this is where Tri-X really wins me over. The flatness of HP5 has always been a problem for me and I just really don't like the way that all images really look washed out and gray. Like I repeated many times in this video, it just seems like the HP5 images exhibit more shades of gray rather than noticeably different dark tones. For my personal black and white photography, I like to see the blacks in my images as blacks, not shades of gray. This is just a look that I prefer and HP5 just doesn't provide me with this. However, you can make the argument that HP5 provides a better starting point. In most situations, a flatter image is better because it's a lot easier to add contrast in post than try to remove it. In this sense, it's almost like HP5 is shooting raw where you're getting a flatter image, whereas Tri-X is a JPEG where there's contrast baked in from the start. You just really have to determine what you want. I personally would just rather have a film stock with a lot of contrast to start with because I know that otherwise I would just have to add it in post and spend more time on the image than necessary. At the end of the day, I want to remind you that the results that you saw in this video are particular to the equipment that I use to make these images, and the things that I said are just my personal opinions. Don't use what you saw in this video as blueprints, but more as guidelines. I would highly recommend you to just shoot these films and experiment with them for yourself because at the end of the day, that's a part of the fun of shooting film. Every emotion has its own characteristics and will provide you with different results. There's a time and a place for everything. Don't lock yourself into one film stock. Try them all and just have some fun. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it around, comment down below with any thoughts or questions that you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.